Oops. Magitin yung dot ko. Okay. <laughs> good morning. Uh, okay. Good morning, everyone. So, welcome to our workshop on citizen science. Uh, there is a request in the chat box for you to rename, uh, identify your institution. Uh, in addition to that, uh, just a reminder na I'm hoping this workshop the next three days will, will to the extent possible, uh, not be formal at all. Uh, I want people to feel free to unmute, to ask questions. Uh, I think it's still best to unmute and say something, pero kung kailangan, gamitin yung chat box. It doesn't matter if you're a trainer, a member of my research team, a student of mine, a trainee na magkakaroon face-to-face -face na component for this, or an observer. doesn't matter uh, at all uh, because that classification will change or can change very quickly given um, the circumstances and the current need for what we're doing. So uh, again, yun nga, kung may tanong, may comments, may gusto kayo dagdag, uh, feel free to, to uh, unmute, speak up, uh, say something, or kung kailangan chat box. Pero I, ako personally, I have trouble following uh, the chat box. Okay, uh, so I guess I can turn over to Denise for just a quick round of introductions. All Good morning, right. everyone. I'm Denise Alcantara. I am one of the research assistants under the CBRAF2 project of DOST Picard. Um, I'm with um, Rainy Cabrera and Alexis Principe as well. Um, Alexis has been the one um, coordinating with you. So Alexis, can you um, do the uh, attendance checklist? <laughs> Thank you, Denise. Yes, uh, good morning to everyone. Thank you for coming. So checking the list of the, no, is we have a large contingent from Mindoro State University, headed by uh, Dr. Kathy Escalona. Also with her are her collaborators and partners in the LGU, uh, Ms. Gilesa from Mansalay and uh, Nerisa Kuna from PG, uh, Puerto, uh, uh, Mindoro Oriental. Provincial uh, government. Yeah. Provincial government. So sila Nerisa yung nag-check ng mga MPAs, nag-monitor. Then we have uh, Ms. Joyce Marquez from uh, President Ramon Magsaysay State University. And then we have also members from DMD, DNR, DMD, uh, Coastal Management Division. Tama po ba, Ms. Uh, Leia? Ustalen Marine, sir. Ustalen oh, Marine, sorry. <laughs> and Ustalen. then we also have students of Sir Al from his uh, De La Salle University. So, so far, kung meron na ako nakalimutan or may, ano, paki, ano na lang, paki, introduce in yourselves. So, so far, wala. Balik na lang sa'yo, uh, Denise. Thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you, everyone. So, this morning, we'll just have a short orientation on what the um, the three-day workshop would um, look like. So um, for this morning, it will just be Sir Al. So this will just be around 30 minutes, I hope. So after non-independent learning na tayo for the rest of the day. We'll send a link to our training videos um, after the orientation. So go ahead, Sir Al. Okay, sige. Uh, 
thank you. I'll I'll turn off my camera just in case uh, I don't want to add to your burdens or hindi <laughs> mandar yun sa akin. Again, kung, kung meron kayong gustong tanong, i-clarify, uh, just go ahead and unmute. Um, my, I, I run my classes the same way. Uh, and so kahit sino, uh, feel free to ask questions, comment, and so on. So, so basically, like uh, sinabi ni Denise, yung plano namin for today is just this short introduction where we are headed, why we're doing this. We turn you over to YouTube where there's about an hour, an hour and a half of videos that describe the methods. And then tomorrow, uh, we uh, describe an exercise after a lecture in by which time kayo naman ang magsasalita, uh, hindi na kami. Okay, so again, kung may tanong, feel free to unmute and speak up. Okay, don't you don't need to raise your hand or anything. Okay, uh, sige. So, uh, sinuggest sa akin na for, for those who are joining our trainings in this project, uh, na I give a brief introduction and kind of establish credibility. Make sure na maniniwala kayo sa amin. Okay, so like was mentioned, this activity is part of a DOST Picard funded project. The title is Capacity Building on Reef Assessment and Coral Taxonomy. And if you talk about coral taxonomy, you should know about this website, uh, which is uh, getting a lot better and will be followed up with a new book coming out this year. So Corals of the World is uh, essentially the update of a four volume series that was first published in 2000. Okay, and the person behind Corals of the World is the first author of this paper, see John Edward Norwood Veron, uh, better known as Charlie Veron. Okay. Uh, so this, this is a 1989 paper, a uh, checklist of the hermatypic corals, the reef building corals of the Philippines. And uh, this was about the time, late 80s, now Veron started looking at corals outside Australia. He started with um, a series of monographs on the Scleractinia of Eastern Australia, essentially the Great Barrier Reef. Then at about this time, he published a book which he called The Corals of Australia and the Indo-Pacific. Pero nag-uumpisa pa lang siya lumabas sa Indo-Pacific. And this was, I think, this paper was the result of his second or third trip to the Philippines. Uh, but mas madami siya nakitang lugar in this trip. Okay. Uh, as mentioned in the abstract, you can see, uh, his first trip was in 1986. And that 86 strip was actually just to Bulinao, the site of the marine laboratory of the University of the Philippines. Because in 86, he held the second coral taxonomy workshop. Uh, the first one was in Thailand, attended by Dr. Perry Alino. The second one was in Bulinao, and I was one of the people that attended. By 88, uh, I had to help these two authors uh, go to these other places. Uh, I also had to introduce uh, Charlie to Dr. Francisco Nemenso, the father of coral taxonomy. And at about 
this year, uh, which is likely way before your parents even met each other. Um, this was taken, but parang naghang yung aking computer. Oh, yes. Ah, okay. Sorry. So that's a picture of Veron taken in 88. This picture was taken in Puerto Galera. And I, the reason I know is because I'm this long haired guy on the side. The picture was taken by Gregor Hodgson, who some of you might know is the founder of Reef Check. Um, about this time, uh, the ASEAN Australia project was running. And the ASEAN Australia project is known for two manuals, Darknell and Jones, that came out in 86. And the first edition of English et al. came out, I think, in 1990. Okay. Uh, that those are products of the ASEAN Australia Cooperative Program in Marine Science. Back then, ASEAN only had five members. And uh, that's the time the life form methods known to some of you were introduced to the region and to the world. Okay. And relevance non the life form method and the reef check method me Gregor Hodgson was is continue they continue to be the basis for the global coral reef monitoring network okay may listahan ng acknowledgements ng paper na to and as always uh see si Charlie is confused about which is my nickname and which is my last name the other guy in the list is Franklin Laging niloloko ni Dr. Villanoy kasi kung i-reduce mo yung middle name ni Franklin to an acronym, he becomes Franklin Tite. Okay, Franklin was my research assistant, even though I was also a research assistant. That's how all this started. Okay, fast forward 2005. Uh, there was a huge global program funded by the GAF and the World War Bank. It's called the CRTR, Coral Reef Targeted Research Program. And there was a project started there by um, Robert Van Wiesick. And the, the, it was called the Common Sampling Project. Common because we were trying to satisfy all six working groups of the GF CRTR project. There was a working group on remote sensing, there was a working group on bleaching, there was a working group on modeling, there was a working group on connectivity and coral diseases, and so on. And we needed to produce monitoring data from coral reefs for all six uh, working groups. And so we had a common audience. Um, doon na develop yung tinatawag namin ngayon na C5 methods. So I'm doing this because we will be mentioning some organizations as we go along. Uh, very important efforts, some of them still ongoing. And that's why I ko kaya ng historical perspective. Okay, so by CRTR, we started using C5 methods. By 2009, when the GF program ended, we started using those same methods for a DOST funded program and this is actually an acronym 
for a big DOST program with eight projects and five universities. Ang focus was climate change in coral reefs. We started monitoring uh, some locations using the methods of CRTR with uh, the ice cream program. Places like Tubataha, parts of Palawan, parts of Mindoro, Pangasinan, Batangas, Davao Gulf. By 2014, we implemented NACRE. Okay, and NACRE is the National Assessment of Coral Reef Environments, the latest, the newest assessment of coral reefs nationwide. And I ran uh, Project One, and uh, some of the people in the team right now were involved in Project One. In 2018, when the NACRE program ended, we had a, we got a small grant from the Oscar M. Lopez Center and with partners from the California Academy of Sciences, Old Dominion University, and the Smithsonian Institute institution, the National Museum of the US, essentially. We developed the methods that we are teaching in this project. Are the projects listed on the screen right now uh, are talking about the same things, are working on the same uh, survey stations. And in 2017 as well, and last year, we got to implement two phases of CBRAT, yung unang project na pinanggit ni Denise. Okay, so this project we're doing now is part of CBRAC 2 and CBRAC 1 and 2 uh, were conceptualized to write up all these methods, develop materials to train people and essentially roll out these methods to the rest of the country. Okay. So dito nanggagaling, ito yung history ng lahat ng sinusubukan namin ituro sa CBRAC 1 and 2. Again, uh, kung merong tanong, may comments, anything, feel free, please feel free to interrupt. Okay. So we're focusing on citizen science. And the reason for this, we will show you, uh, exists both at the local community level and at the national level. Let's start with the community level. Okay. Uh, people at the level of local governments, provincial governments, uh, we ask them if they can answer the following questions. Uh, or, mas madalas actually, they ask the same questions. Dumadami ba yung isda sa kanilang marine protected areas? Dumadami ba yung corals? Tumataas ba yung coral cover? Or hindi? Nababawasan ba yung corals? A big problem now, uh, nationwide, it seems, not just in Batangas province, is um, madami bang crown of thorns? Inuubos na ba yung corals ng inyong mga protected areas ng crown of thorns? And inuubos uh, is a very um, appropriate term kasi we measured 
in Batangas. Na a single crown of thorns starfish can consume 1.2 square meters of coral per day. And so if you have thousands of them, you can imagine how quickly your corals will die. We also have this problem happening a lot. Uh, major yung 2020, uh, but for other parts of the world, 2016, 2017, for the Philippines, 2010. Uh, the first one was 98, but there were smaller ones in the country before that. Meron bang bleaching sa protected areas. Kung naglagay kayo ng giant clams, nandudoon pa ba sila? Or pinoach na? Uh, and madami bang basura na iipon ba sa mga protected areas? If you're managing an MPA, uh, whether it's locally managed or nationally managed, if you cannot answer these questions, then uh, clearly you can manage those MPAs better because uh, what they teach you in management school, business management, of course, is you cannot manage what you cannot count. If you don't know anything about what's going on in your protected areas, then it would be very difficult to be an effective uh, manager or an effective advisor to managers. So that's at the local level. At the national level, we also need citizen science. Uh, and the reasons are actually fairly simple. The Philippines has the third largest reef area in the world. Estimates vary from 13,000 to 25, sometimes 26,000 square kilometers. Uh, we're third after Indonesia, number one, Australia, number two. But if you wonder, uh, bakit ang laki ng range ng estimates ng reef areas uh, atin? Uh, simple answer is we don't have a good map of where the coral reefs are. And all those estimates come from bathymetry, uh, not really ground truth. Coral reefs contribute around 25% of Philippine fisheries production. Uh, this is an old estimate. Um, there are no newer ones, or if there are newer ones, they still have the same number. Uh, and we are widely known to have uh, the most number of coral species, the organisms that build those reefs. Uh, a lot of them are found in the Philippines and uh, potentially some of them are found only in the Philippines. But despite this, there's this one um, rather troubling number and this number just came up this year. Uh, the number of sites with long-term monitoring data in the Philippines. According to the latest report of one of the acronyms I mentioned earlier, the Global Coral Reef Monitoring Network came out with the latest report on the status of coral reefs. It's uh, listed as 20, a 2020 report, but 
as before, it came out late. But buti na lang, it still came out because the last one was several years ago. If you look at the summary of this report, especially for the area that re they refer to as the East Asian Seas region, uh, these are some parts of this report. This is East Asian Seas. Notice subregion one is mostly the Philippines and parts of Sulawesi. Okay. The apex of the so-called coral triangle, which is mostly the East Asian seas, except hindi na sama ang New Guinea. And there's stable 7.2 there. We are in subregion one. And sa dami ng surveys, 11,000 surveys, long-term monitoring zero okay long-term monitoring in this latest gcrmn report is revisiting the same reef for more than 15 years okay wala tayong minimum monitor na reef na ganun katagal although you can argue na meron like to Bataha, the fact is they're not in the GCRMN and GSCRMN, therefore, on the basis of essentially no data, concludes now, unlike the other regions of the world, according to them, the reefs of the East Asian seas are stable stable and likely resistant from bleaching because of water quality issues. It's uh, essentially saying that the dominant too big dito uh, na pro protect yung corals. I don't think that statement holds any water because as many of you know, this is a summary of the results of NACR. And if an area is represented by a red circle, it means that either coral cover is below average and average is 22.8 or the richness or what we used to call diversity kinds of corals is below 18. And we pointed out in the final publication of NACR, na if you compare the average coral cover from 2014 to 2017 with previous averages, we just average survey data from the past. This suggests our coral cover uh, is a lot lower than the last uh, average. And this meta-analysis by Vanji covered a large number of uh, surveys but still mostly in the Visayas. May mga problems yun. <coughs> survey tayo ng survey, walang nagmamonitor. We're hoping na this executive order, uh, which was discussed last week in our workshop, would hopefully encourage uh, more organizations to make sure there is monitoring of reefs because regional, provincial uh, development councils will need information about what these reefs 
will be worth or are worth okay, in monetary terms uh, to guide decision making. And this system, once implemented, requires information on extent and condition of coral reefs. Okay. Most data, almost all data being collected since the life form methods were introduced in the 80s by myself, just describes condition, not extent. So imagine all these protected areas. Uh, I was told a newer number is around 3% for this one. All these protected areas, um, they hardly have any monitoring. How can we manage them if we're not monitoring them? So this is where this workshop comes in. We clearly do not have enough trained personnel. We do not have enough scientists to monitor these places effectively. The multiplier effect, though, of involving community members in the monitoring goes beyond getting more data in. So we started using this name uh, fairly recently. We call it the Alwan Methods because a uh, Genya member of our team, C. Kim, suggested the use of the word Alwan, which means to ease or to ease. Okay. And uh, that's what we're trying to achieve with citizen science. With citizen science, we hope to involve more people in the monitoring of reefs. That means more data will be generated. But as important as the data being generated, we also encourage greater awareness among the people involved. The awareness leads to, based on experiences around the world, awareness leads to better compliance. Awareness leads to greater participation in the conservation and management of the resource in question, in this case, coral reefs. And it allows for an effort that is sustainable uh, and hopefully you know, we will have more monitoring in the future and maybe in 15 years, we will have something to contribute to the global coral reef monitoring network, but more importantly, have data to guide our conservation and management efforts of local reefs. So the methods that you will learn or be updated on in the next few days, the L1 citizen science methods, anybody can participate it does not require a lot of equipment. In fact, we actually learn that it's impossible to do these things with scuba methods. Uh, and yet it will and does produce data that's comparable to the data we generated using the methods. Uh, that we've been using for the last decade. Yung CRTR, NACR, C5 methods. So the L1 methods has four components. Our focus will be 
the three that are done in the water, okay, in reef survey stations. Uh, as you will learn this morning from the videos, uh, we don't just focus on corals, which is what this is about. We also look at butterfly fishes and some invertebrates. But in reality, what these two sets of organisms contribute to the data is it allows us to interpret the coral data better. Okay. So main palang ikaklaro ko na these methods were not designed to look at, for example, fish biomass or fish density or things that uh, you need to know about fisheries. Okay. There's another set of methods for that, uh, particularly for reef fish, uh, Dr. Abisamis of Siliman University is rolling out a citizen science method for reef fish uh, uh, density and biomass. Okay. So these methods, the one methods are focused on the reef itself and understanding why the reef is changing. And as you can see in these videos, uh, the Mukalana scuba and the uh, fishers, uh, Bantay Dagat, local youth can uh, easily learn these methods in about half a day. And uh, with the videos that you'll see shortly, uh, actually maybe even less than half a day now. So how does it work? Um, there's a short period of training uh, survey which could start as early as the same day of the initial lectures and a very important part of our implementation of citizen science for al one there's processing in public we want people kahit na hindi nakakalangoy kahit hindi kasama dun sa survey, to be able to see what's going on, see for themselves ano yung nangyayari sa reef, see how the numbers are generated, and as you will also see shortly, again, um, even play a part in presenting these results to their officials and supervisors. Okay. Um, how is this last part done? We have uh, refined our scorecards, which summarizes the data into letter scores. A is good, D is bad. And it's each reef gets something like this, a set of grades uh, every time it's surveyed. And uh, to further interpret these grades, uh, you will also get to use tools like this. Uh, diagnosis tree that uh, allows you to figure out, for example, why the corals are turning white. Like if you have a crown of thorns outbreak. And uh, with tools like this, you don't really need uh, that many trained personnel to be present during the survey. Uh, if at all, if you have well-trained people, uh, they can do these surveys themselves. And uh, we have examples that we can show you. This is one, since crown of thorns is a big problem in many parts of the country. 
when we were still refining these methods, this is data from one leaf, a series of dates between 2018 and 2019, when a crown of thorns outbreak was detected by our community partners. These clearly affected coral cover, the blue bars, and you can see how quickly coral cover can decline even in a matter of days with a lot of crown of thorns around. And you can see here that even the number of individuals of butterfly fish and the number of species of butterfly fish also responds to these changes in coral cover. Our illustration and illustration of how sensitive these methods are, but it all this also illustrates the value in terms of working with community partners. Sila yung nag-report na may nangyayari and when the data was generated, the data triggered cleanups by volunteers. So other groups got involved and uh, the local government got to coordinate. So um, one of the things that I mentioned ko kanina with regards to natural capital accounting is our work and this set of citizen science methods not only produces data on condition, but also on extent. The reason we can do that is because one, these methods are done in shallow waters. Yung National Assessment of Coral Reef Environments, we applied survey stations, which are 75 by 25 meters in diameter. These are sampled randomly with five 50 meter transects, hence the name C5, because this clearly defined station is sampled randomly, the data generated from the five transects represents the station, the 1,875 square meters of the station. And such a station is very visible using satellite images. And if you don't already know it exists, there's a website called the uh, Allen Coral Atlas, A-L-L-E-N. And the data sets generated by Maker from such stations was a big factor in calibrating that Allen Coral database, which we will revisit tomorrow. Uh, even though meron pa rin problems yun. The citizen science methods we're introducing works with the same survey station. And instead of transects, 50 meter transects sampled by divers, we have at least 30 images at random places in the station taken by skin divers or free divers. And we showed in a publication that came out last year, uh, the data between C30 and C5 are very comparable. Because we use the same stations, we use the same site selection criteria, we use methods that are image-based and therefore could be reprocessed, validated. Uh, and because you know, we can recognize things from images, 
we can generate detailed data, not just on coral cover, but richness. Okay. Even if you do not have diving gear available, even if you have only two volunteers working with you. So that's what the next three days is about. Um, before we describe what happens next, meron ba kayong tanong, uh, points of clarification, or if anybody wants to add to what I just showed, uh, feel free to unmute and speak up. Or Mahia. Anybody? Sure, Al. Ako na lang. <laughs> yes. Very Shara po from Tanap Yambi. Recently po, naggaling lang kami sa Region 1. Um, yung kanilang survey station, di 25 by 75. Ang tanong nila if Diba meron tayong five randomly yun sa C5? Mm -hmm. um, dapat po daw ba na yun na yun pa rin yung, yung transect na 50 or pwede daw iba the next monitoring? Parang Bali, within the 25 by 75 pa rin po. Yes. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, as long as you're working with the same station, uh, you ang ideal is nire-randomize mo kung saan nagpupunta yung lima. You don't have to put the five in the, exactly the same place that was surveyed uh, in the past. Because yung idea nga, kaya sinasample yung station randomly is because pag sinample mo randomly yung loob ng station, uh, your findings can be extrapolated to the entire station. Not just yung tinamaan ng transect. Mm -hmm. So Pero, monitoring nila yearly. So, balikan nila yung station. Balikan nila yung station. Pero random yung, yung transect. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. And then, kung wala silang scuba, they can apply itong methods na ituturo mm -hmm. dito. And you can still compare the data between the Scuba C5 and uh, free diving C30. Thank you, sir. Sir, I have a question. Uh, si Kasi, Kasi from New York. Yes, go ahead. Uh, I, I may be asking the question for the provincial government, Nasan Basen, scenario. Uh, because we've been discussing this change of method uh, with the provincial government. Kasi, as of now, they're using reef check. Yes. Okay. Uh, yun. And then, uh, of course, they're planning to uh, implement C C thirteen and C thirty. Um, um, the, the last time that we joined them, um, sabi namin sa kanila, can we try C C five? Um, ang ang question is that yung sites kasi na napili ay hindi pasok sa criteria ng method. Mm. What's your comment on that? Okay. Like maybe uh, it's too deep, maybe it's too deep or patchy coral, mm -hmm. hindi siya ano, hindi siya buo. What's your comment on that? Okay. Um yung yung mm -hmm. short answer is uh that's actually yung focus ng lecture ko bukas. Uh because we realize na one there's a lot of legacy data that some people have trouble giving up. Okay. Uh, two, some of the coral areas that people are interested in or have been declared as protected areas are not ideal, are not the best, uh, or uh, and do not meet the criteria of the kind of reefs na naging focus namin dun sa nationwide assessment. Yung uh, 
not so short na answer dun sa tanong mo is uh, you can suggest a transition of sorts wherein may overlap yung isang lugar is survey nyo using reef check you survey nyo using the same methods uh, and then at some point a uh, decision be made kung itutuloy yung reef check or hindi. Okay. Um, pero uh, if you ask me tomorrow or um, I can try and explain the same now, uh, yung, yung methods na tinuturo namin will be better uh, for future use. And so for example, yung uh, workshop last week about itong natural uh, capital accounting no, framework. Uh, I made the case na for a baseline to determine sa antay magsisimula uh, for future monitoring, the old data, they're not useful at all. Okay. In other words, if, if you want to implement uh, future uses of reef monitoring, especially the using the methods na in-introduce namin, uh, hindi nyo magagamit yung lumang data. Dahil ang nare-represent lang nung reef check transects na yun ay yung, yung part ng reef sa ilalim ng transect not a station that you can see from space like yung pinakita ko kanina and if you cannot see from space uh, what part of the reef was surveyed hindi mo may extrapolate yung findings mo sa mas malawak na lugar yun ang hindi magagawa ng life form hindi yun magagawa ng reef check these old methods were not designed for those things because one, yung sampling nila mali, pangalawa, masyado silang malalim, hindi nakikita sa satellite yung pinupuntahan nila. Uh, and between those two problems, uh, you're better off using the methods C5 or C30. Kasama sa proposal yung pagpalit ng site. <laughs> Uh, yung pagpalit ng site, uh, again, you can ask me tomorrow. Uh, hindi, I don't think mababago natin yung, halimbawa ko saan nilagay yung MPA, that sort of thing. Pero kung gusto mo ma-interpret yung data na magagaling do sa MPA na yun, kahit na hindi nag-meet ng criteria natin, kailangan mo ng isang basis for comparison. And yun yung ini-introduce namin na idea na meron kang comparison site. And I will describe that comparison site tomorrow. Pero the idea with the comparison site is para magamit mo yung mga scales, para magamit mo yung scorecard na pinakita ko kanina, kailangan mo yung comparison site. At yung comparison site ay nag-meet nung criteria na binanggit mo kanina. Pero I will describe again tomorrow. Yes, sir. May follow up dun sa tanong na yon. Uh, additional points. I know we're kind of over time, but um, but there will be some issues because potentially when you see these videos, so we figured na mag-usap muna tayo pago namin kayo it turn over sa mga recordings. So again, kung hindi ko fully na-explain yung mga points na ni-raise ngayon, uh, ask me again uh, tomorrow. Pero I sir, suppose... Sir, I'll, yes, go. I'll another thing. Uh, I like the term legacy data. Um, so, so is there a way of bridging 
or or maybe I'm going ahead of the topic again. Is there a way of bridging uh, the legacy data? Mostly, ah, nasagot mo na pala, no? Like, hindi yeah. siya kita from space. Okay, thank you. I, so, I over, be... Pero pwede mong i-overlap. Okay. And then, uh, uh -huh. I, I'm starting to study it now. Pero it can't be done at the local level. It has to be at least basin. Uh, uh -oh. I, uh, I'm, I'm learning meta-analysis. If, if yeah. you have a large number of data yes. from many places, kahit iba-iba yung methods, we can try uh -huh. and see uh, if there is some information that we can extract. Okay. dapat hindi mataas ang expectations mo dahil iba-iba nga yung methods hindi pare-pareho yung sites hindi na -re revisit yung same reefs madalas um, but kung ano man yung makukuha natin kung meron uh, in comparing old data and new data uh, meta-analysis appears to be the only option left uh, ang plano ko sa team is we will try it with Tubataha data because that's where you have a mix of long-term old methods and new methods data. And um, what we learn from that, we will try and uh, see if we can do the same for maybe next step is West Philippine Sea because uh, I can get funding to do that meta-analysis um, and then maybe for other places in the future. Pero hindi nga local yan kasi kailangan daan-daan or libo-libong surveys ang meron. Thank you, sir. Pero yun nga, yung, yung last na meta-analysis is yung paper ni Vanji na minention ko. Okay, uh, again, keeping in mind uh, there's a variety of backgrounds here. Uh, we have academics, we have students, we have people working for local or for local governments, provincial, municipal. Um, some questions will take us certain directions, other questions will take us other directions, pero either way, wag kayong mag hesitate, mag tanong. So it's 10, I'll turn over to Denise and Alexis to describe what happens the rest of the day and the succeeding days. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Al. So I'll be showing lang yung program that was sent to you last week and yesterday. Here. Okay, so today, um, tapos na yung training orientation. The rest of the day will be um, for viewing lang the volunteer training videos. So we created this these videos um, for you, our potential trainers, to show yung mga volunteers nyo sa community. So I hope um, makapagbigay din kayo ng comments since first time namin tong i-present um, to an audience outside the team. So, um, you can watch it anytime during the day and you can send us your comments anytime during the day also. So, um, no need to stay in the Zoom room naman. We meet again tomorrow at 9 o'clock again. Um, and we'll start the day with um, a forum on volunteer training videos. So, we have allotted time to offer some questions um, regarding the eight videos that you watched. So required na you, you watch it before you come in um, the training tomorrow. Um, and then during the morning, tomorrow we'll have lectures from Sir Al. So introduction to reef assessment, where to put your station, and an introduction to the case study. So for our TBRAC to phase one, um, phase one alumni. 
Um, medyo familiar na ata kayo sa case study. So we'll do it again for this um, for this workshop. So case study lecture and then sa hapon, we'll proceed to breakout rooms where we can guide you while doing your case study. But you can opt to do it independently as well. But we'll create breakout rooms so that you could ask um, us, your trainers, some questions while you are um, preparing for the case study um, tomorrow, uh, on Friday. So, okay. Typo pala tong sa day three. For the morning ng day three will be case study presentation. So all of you will be uh, presenting your own case studies the entire morning where Sir Al and the rest of the team can ask you questions and comment on why you chose that research objective or um, how you did your um, site selection. So you'll get more information tomorrow. And then sa afternoon, will be a short um, round table discussion lang and orientation for face-to-face -face training ng some of the participants in this Zoom call. So that's it for the program schedule of our online training. Um, we'll send a link in the chat for the YouTube um, channel. So the short team has created a YouTube channel now where we created a playlist also para sunod-sunod na yung panonood nyo ng um, training videos. So I hope that would be easier for you guys. Um, so just let us know if you have any technical difficulties. Just message any one of the uh, RAs under the CBRAC2 um, project. So there you go. Any questions po for the um, program? Yes, we'll send the link via email as well. So, wait, I'll share the link now. Here you go. So, any questions, Papo, from the group? So kung wala na po, any last, ano, Sir Al? Okay na. I'll see you tomorrow. Same yes. place. See you tomorrow, guys. Happy viewing sa videos. So just feel free to contact us anytime during the day. Thank you so much and good morning again. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks din po. Thank you.